Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 19 of Cinemental. Now this I can do. I can't compete with you physically, and you're no match for my brain. I don't give a crap if you covered yourself in peanut butter and had a 15-hooker gangbang. Welcome to another episode of the Movie Podcast that we can only hope you enjoy listening to as much as we enjoy making. My name is Stephen Owicki, and I'm here with my co-hosts, as usual, Hassan Godwin and Lathan Conger III. Today's guest is a musician, a film historian, and the author of over 40 published books. He is probably most well-known as the first American author of continuation James Bond novels from 1996 to 2002, when he wrote six original 007 novels and three film novelizations. His acclaimed five-book serial, The Black Stiletto, is currently in development as a feature film or television series. Most recently, his novels include Blues in the Dark, In the Hush of the Night, and Secrets on Chicory Lane. And coming this September, a new thriller, Hotel Destiny, a ghost noir. He also writes regularly for Cinema Retro Magazine. Raymond Benson, welcome to Cinemental. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. It's, uh, it's absolutely our pleasure, believe me. Yeah, absolutely. That is quite the, quite the resume. Me. <laughs> what what is the what is the musician side of things? Oh, I've I've been a composer and a piano player for since I was a kid. Oh, and, wow, fantastic! Uh, w- one of the things I was I was telling you earlier that I was I lived in New York City. I was in theater then, and oh, I was composing okay. music for shows and playing the piano off off Broadway, off Broadway, off 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 off, off way off Broadway, <laughs> um, and so on, and directing as well. But I still play. I I have gigs. Uh, well, I used to have gigs. Uh, oh, before, no, before what's COVID. what's uh, what's slowing you down now? What's what's the problem? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been I've been uploading piano pieces to yeah, Facebook. You know, he's not YouTube. slowing wow. down. Actually, Excellent. every day he usually does say. Uh, a live piano play on Facebook. Oh, that's fantastic. Overachiever. Yeah, that's really cool. Stop making the rest of us look bad. <laughs> <laughs> I put this. Hey, we're busy making podcasts. That counts. I put this uh, placard up today. I noticed yeah. that. I just saw the. I saw the bottom half on the so, uh, on the on the so show. So take earlier. that, Raymond. I, that's what I did. That's huh? that's how. <laughs> that's oh, cool. how I get down. Right. I put. I put up. Is that Robocop? No, I don't even know what that is. I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's not, it's not a Valcadia character. No, uh, it's real. It's a uh, Macross. It's a. It's a. Oh, but it's not you though. No, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I just Hassan is also a comic book artist and uh, writer. So awesome. And for for Raymond's second film, uh, his choice is Twin Peaks: Fire Walk with Me. My secret diary. That page is messy. <laughs> There is no other person who could have known where it was. Did Bobby give you this? Or is there someone new? Your Laura disappeared. It's just me now. You made me write it all down. We live inside a dream. Who am I? I don't know. You look just like my Laura. Don't make me do this! Directed by David Lynch with a running time of 134 minutes. Ostensibly a prequel to the TV series, this film gives so much more context to the Twin Peaks universe and follows the final week of Laura Palmer's life leading up to where season one launched filling in gaps from the investigation, all the while introducing and expanding even more characters to this already established world. Raymond, why did you pick this movie? Well, I was told to pick a guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I I really don't have any guilty pleasures. I think every movie I like is a good movie. even you know so well that well that was the that was the point you pick a movie that you like no matter what yeah no matter what anybody else thinks but so but i thought about it and i you know i 
I really did not like Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me when I first saw it. And I oh, was a huge I was a huge Twin Peaks fan. I was Twin Peaks is my favorite TV show of all time. Okay. I love it. Absolutely love it. And so I was really looking forward to Fire Walk with me <laughs> in 1992 when I when it was coming out. I was just like the first one I saw it opening day. You know, I was see? there. I was angry coming out of that movie theater. <laughs> I was just going, what did David Lynch just do to me? <laughs> I was so upset. And But you had and, to know the propensity of David Lynch, of the chances of him doing something like this to you exist. Not really. I mean, you know, up to that point, I was, a, I liked everything he did. You know, even mm -hmm. Dune, I loved. Uh, yeah. Blue Velvet, I think, is his, still his masterpiece, really. Uh, but Twin Peaks, you know, he was just coming off of Twin Peaks. And then there was wild at heart which i liked i thought mm -hmm. that was terrific yep so i was all ready for this i thought this is all right more twin peaks okay you know and it was such a different tone mostly you know completely different kind of tone from the tv series it was dark it was unpleasant very unpleasant mm -hmm. it was at the time i thought it was misogynistic i don't know it was just, it, it gave me a, I wanted to take a shower almost, you know, it was like that kind of feeling <laughs> afterwards. Do you, do you and, think that your expectation going in played a part? I, well, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I think it did for a lot of people, you know, I mean, it, you know, it got booed at Cannes Film Festival, you know, <laughs> that year and it bombed. I mean, the movie bombed. It, he it, denies it, it, that story though, by the way. Oh no, it the, did. Get, the producer it, denies that story that it got, I'm not, I'm not disputing you. But I, just, I, I was reading about it, and That's I will funny. tell you why uh, later. But <laughs> it was, and he denies the story about the booing. So I don't know. Um, but I, I don't dispute that this movie got booed. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and I, and that's all I'll say. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving now. I'm just gonna... <laughs> Go on, Raymond. <laughs> yeah. Tell us why your opinion changed. Uh, oh, um, I was talking. Right, right. Yeah. Well, so, you know, and it didn't, you know, Dale Cooper wasn't in it much and it just was, I, th I thought it was an unpleasant movie, but anyway, oh, I was talking about seeing it again and I thought it worked a lot better. Uh, you know, I got the VHS when it came out because I collected David Lynch stuff and, and I bought it. So I watched it again and I thought it worked a lot better on the small screen. Interesting. And then I realized, you know what? This is a horror movie. The more I thought about it and the more I looked at it as a horror movie, I thought it's great. This is a horror movie and it works really well as a horror movie. Okay. I have seen it a couple, you know, seen it more times since and I really like it. And then the, you know, I, I, I learned that, you know, there was almost two hours of other footage that he had to cut out that had all the other Twin Peaks characters in it and everything. I was going, oh, we should see that, you know. And then I got hold of the, the original script and I got to read the whole script knowing, oh, I wish I could see this. And finally, when it came out on Blu-ray, you know, um, they had the missing pieces, which was the extra footage. Yep. And so that, you know, made a lot of big difference. And then I've, I've actually seen a bootleg now of, of the movie with the missing pieces put in oh, where wow. they were supposed to be. Cool. And it's really great. Like and it's it. almost a four hour movie. Wow. So now I really love the movie. I think it's <laughs> terrific. And you know, season three of Twin Peaks really draws a lot from Fire Walk with Me. You have to have seen Fire Walk with Me before you really can get into season three of Twin Peaks. Okay. So, in fact, you know, uh, we were talking about Philip Jeffries earlier, uh, Steve. Yeah. Jeffries is a big part of season three. Okay. They use footage of David Bowie. In it, oh, you know, fantastic! Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so um, you know, yeah, so it's it's now very much a part of the Twin Peaks, you know, thing. And also, Lynch's movies became for the rest of the '90s were more like Firewalk with Me in style. Yes, you know. So I got into that, you know. So I I learned to accept you knew what to expect. Firewalk with Me. Yeah, I think it's funny when people who only know David Lynch for films like Blue Velvet and Wild at Heart and uh, Mulholland Drive, uh, you'll, you'll turn around and show them The Elephant Man and they go, wait, this is a David Lynch yeah. film? Yeah. 
or I mean, straight story. Yeah, straight well, story. it's the straight story. Yeah, G rated yeah. you know, Disney movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's 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 a very capable filmmaker yes. at his heart, and the fact that he chooses to put on screen probably the way his brain sort of sees the world, yeah. which is interesting and fascinating you know just lends to well, his he's another one of these guys that makes art films you know i mean oh I mean, yeah he did do a yeah. couple of you know trying to go commercial like the elephant man and dune you know that was hollywood you know productions blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. but when he makes a david lynch film quote unquote it's an art film and you know it's it's for a, speci a yeah. specific audience you know not and if you well if you dig lynch you dig yes, it I exactly mean, but but you know what you're gonna yeah. get you know for the most yeah. part um so Hassan. Yeah, sir. Yeah, you uh, start, Hassan. Why don't you why don't you tell us what you thought of it? Um it's a let me see if I got it correctly first. Hold on. Okay. One 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 quick question before you go in. Hmm. Have you seen all of Twin Peaks, the TV stuff? No, he said Yeah. I I watched the TV show when it first aired as okay. a kid. And then I watched partially, maybe halfway, not even halfway, maybe the first three, four episodes of, no, uh, of, no, of uh, season two. Okay. And then stopped. Okay. And season two is where it got canceled because it kind of everybody fell off as soon as they failed to, or they refrained from solving the mystery right. from season one. Immediately. Right. Okay. All right. I, so just, uh, all right just go ahead. Seemed like to me, to me, without it, without all the uh, mythology of the show and the series in and of itself, that it's a story of a girl who is being sexually assaulted by her father since she was twelve, and has suppressed it to the point where you know, taking all the mythology out of it, because I know there's a supernatural element to it, but seemingly the story is to on, on a rudimentary level has suppressed it to the point where she has replaced her father with uh, an entity that she has not been able to, you know, that, that she subconsciously knows exactly who the entity is, but consciously cannot uh, face the fact that this entity is her father. And the, the movie is catching us up with the last week of her life where psychologically she's, she's coming out of a fog and able to face uh, what the, what the cause of her damage is. And, and in the midst of unraveling that mystery, she's still reeling with the residuals of who the, the, these assaults have made her into. The thing about it is that with taking, taking the show completely off the table, it's not mysterious as to what's going on in the film. Once you once you sit once you're watching and you figure out oh she's being assaulted she doesn't know who you know she she's being assaulted by her father she can't deal with the fact that she's being assaulted by her father so it's turned her into a duplicitous kind of monster of her own um, her her father also moonlights as a serial killer at, you know of of some proliferation and once you figure that out I think the movie. Is, is successfully vague about it up until a point, and then, and then there, it gives you enough pieces. By the time you figure that out, we're only less than halfway through the movie. So at some point, the, in my opinion, the audience is ahead of the main character in figuring out the, you know, the, the crux of the problem. And so now you're, all the other stuff is style. You know, all, everything else you're watching is the stylization of someone coming out of of their mental damage long enough to see the truth and then get murdered for for knowing the truth and so that that kind of left me hollow that was my you know that was my interpretation of it that left me hollow and then there's other things there's there's chris isaacs just vanishing without in from what i can tell without them really explaining <laughs> what what happened to him i'm sure it's implied and i i missed it to some extent there is the David Bowie thing that's like, okay, you know? Uh, and yeah, I, I agree with uh, Raymond about the Kyle McLaughlin just sort of not 
being in the film at all, even though he's the main character in the in the in the TV show. So I I didn't enjoy this ride. <laughs> this experience was a. Uh, I understand. Was, I understand your pain. Uh, <laughs> let me ask. Let me ask you a question, Hassan. Do you think, mm. looking at it the way you looked at it, do you think that her drug use was what partially lifted the veil on her realization? that her father was molesting her? Or do you think the drugs were her way of masking or trying to keep those veils in place? Uh, probably a little bit of both. Okay. I mean, the psychological damage of that, especially ha it happening since she said, I think she said she was 12 years old. Yeah. You know, that it's, it's kind of incalculable how much, you know, because her brain, you know, the, 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 hor the horror of it to the, to whatever extent, and I am not a psychologist by any stretch of the imagination, but the horror of it. <laughs> but I play one for, on this podcast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 yes. As far as this podcast is concerned, I'm a PhD. Probably, you know, the damage was far reaching, you know? Of course. The damage, the, 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 I mean, who knows exactly where any of her motivations were coming from after that. Okay. You know? All right. It's fair. So. I, 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 one one thing that I think, and you could argue one one second. You could argue that all the things that the 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 mother and her child, the the you can argue all of those things were her psych, uh, sub subconscious trying to reveal to her the truth and get her to look specifically at what the problem is. But right. she's not the only one who saw them. So that's that's the supernatural aspect that kind of right that kind of knocks you off your your kilter a little bit to right. in, in, in fully interpreting what's going on without any knowledge of the mythology of the TV show in and of itself. If you're just watching it cold, you know? Yeah. And, and so, and I was basically watching it cold this time around because I hadn't, it's I've been a long time for the TV. Yeah. It's been 30 years since I seen the show. Okay. And it's been, uh, and I, and I never really managed to get into season three. So okay. I never returned to it. So. Or the rest of the two. Lay, I know I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure where, where you're going to land on this, but go ahead. Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, so, yeah, I was obviously a big fan of Twin Peaks. So going in, I was biased because I loved it, similar to Raymond. I didn't have the same reaction when I saw it. Actually, you and I saw it together at Woodfield One. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, seeing it on the big screen in reverse of seeing it on the TV was at first, it didn't seem right, but then by the end of the movie, it just, I mean, it, you know, obviously in the TV, the movie, but it was still captivating. And the thing I love about Lynch is he just, he picks these, you know, little detailed scenes that always stick with you. And every movie he has, there's every, certainly all his good ones, there's five or six of these scenes in every movie. You know, in Blue Velvet, it's the, it's the scene near the end where the cop is standing up dead in the room and uh, what's his name? Frank Booth is coming to, coming to uh, cause some problems. In this, there's multiple. <laughs> I, I was trying to think of Don't a way to phrase it. Don't look at me! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. That's, that's, that's better. But in this, the Feeling whole movie cross. is haunting. I mean, it's at the beginning, it kind of teases you because it starts off with a couple of funny things. It's a, obviously the credits are not funny. They're brutal right off the bat. And, you know, in symbolically wise, a TV gets absolutely destroyed in the opening credit shot as right. if he's saying, we're not doing the TV show. We're doing something else here. Yeah. And, you know, there's just haunting scenes in this movie. The, the whole scene with David Bowie is just, I mean, that just, that really got to me. Like it bothered me. The scene with the picture on the wall where they eventually go in the picture. Oh, that's I mean, the best that's scene just, in the movie. That is my that, favorite that's a scene in the movie. I would have to agree, probably with me as well. And what I, you know, I love the movie. I think it's, you know, I just think image wise and it, it, I, I'm going to be biased because I like the TV show. I'm trying to look at it at the point of view of someone who had not seen the TV show or like Hassan hadn't seen it in a while. I can I can see the context of it not fully coming to fruition. I think, and maybe, again, Raymond's probably going to disagree with me here because he's seen the show as, as much as I have, but I, I think what they're trying to do with this show and what he was trying to do is make the part of humanity that rapes and kills almost like that's the villain. Like the, ent the entity of rape and violence is this 
indefeatable monster that can't be overtaken by humans. And with this movie, she fights and she fights and she fights and, and she dies in her battle against this. But then at the end, we get this beautiful sequence to end the, end the film in the Black Lodge that just, you know, it's just this vision of hope. And in contrast to the rest of the movie, I mean, that, that scene gets me every time. And I think it's a perfect bookend and why, why I love this film. I think it's just balanced when, it, when everything comes, you know, to a point at the end. Okay. That's yeah, fair. I, sorry. No, 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 no. Not Anvil a... on the uh, radio audience there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, uh, dust yourself off, get up, take a few minutes, come back if you'd like to. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, 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 so I, again, I, I, I haven't watched this since we saw it in the theater. Mentioning to Raymond earlier that uh, I recently reviewed the original first season, the first, that first eight or 10 episode run that came out with Deirdre because she had never seen them. Uh, we didn't go into second season yet, and I have not watched the later seasons because I figured it's just something we'd dive into once we were finished with that full second season and just kind of work our way through organically. So she she, she actually did not watch the, this movie with me. We'll get to it after the after the first two seasons are done. There's so much good in this movie. I don't really know where to start. You guys have already touched on a few of the things I've already noted about, and I just feel like there were, I mean, that dream sequence, Raymond, the one that you say is your favorite scene in the movie. I love the fact when she's sitting there and she looks over at the door and she looks back on the bed and there's that girl lying on the bed, bloody. And she just says, you know, about don't, don't let him take the ring or what? what well, she says, uh, Dale is in the lodge. Uh, da, 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 da. And that, that refers to the, uh, the yes. last scene, the last episode right. of the second season. Right. So when, she, but then she turns back to the door again and turns back and the girl is gone and she's more upset by the fact that the girl is gone yeah. than by the fact that she was there in the first place. Exactly. It's so dreamlike. I mean, Lynch, Lynch does dreams better than anybody, you know? Yeah. Then, then he, then yeah. people do, then most people do real life. Yeah, I agree. I know the level of discomfort in the dinner scene where she comes in and he starts going after her about her hands not being clean. Oh, oh. Yeah. That whole, that whole four minute scene of, of is just, is so unbelievably unsettling and you follow it in, in, in which I see him as being the Bob character there or being partially yeah. the Bob character there. Yeah. Now well, he's breaking through for sure. And now you turn around and you follow that up with him coming in to kiss her goodnight in which he's clearly full Leland again. And it's, it's such a 180 degree turn after that, that sequence that you're left like, like so unnerved by. Yeah. And you just, you watch that as a, as a sort of mirror image and you realize that it, I think that's one of the earliest, you know, kind of, things where you see besides the fact you know where she you know runs out of the house and, and sees him coming out of the house you know after she saw bob in the bedroom but i think that that's one of the earlier indicators of that there's clearly something going on there you know and and obviously you know and i understand hassan you're seeing that as a, a psychological thing as opposed to a a true physical manifestation of another being inhabiting or another force inhabiting the father but uh, yeah i just uh, Watching this movie, and then I sat and I was telling Raymond that I, I watched all of the deleted and extended bits as well, just to get a little bit more context from the film. And, and I think that, and I have not watched this longer cut with everything in it, but I think getting rid of all the sequences that have all those side characters that he just kind of shot the extra scenes for to have them involved, that was an excellent call removing all that stuff. Well, yeah, he had to do that. I mean, I think I think it just kind of muddies the waters of the film a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you can't release a four hour. Right, right. Well, not just that, make, but I think made no money. It would make negative. I, I, money. I get so that. I get that. But I think that that but yeah. I think that there's probably seven or eight minutes that he could restore to that. Well, film. Certainly the Jeffries part. I think the whole Jeffrey sequence, he should have left the way he had it. That and I think absolutely the sequence that explains why he had to kill Teresa Banks because he cut that out of the movie. I don't remember that, but 
Yeah. That's the phone, the phone, when the phone call, when she calls him and he realizes that she knows who it is. Oh, that, that was, right. that's not in Firewalk right. with me. I couldn't, I can't remember. No. Yeah. It is. Well, it's not in there, but it's, it, it's discussed. Right. It's I remember discussed the scene. Jacques said, because Jacques said, oh, that girl called asking about you guys' fathers, but they don't actually show her calling him on the phone. Oh, okay. I, and I'm like, but she dies in the first scene of the movie, right? That's, yeah. that's who's But there's dying. flashbacks with her. Yeah, yeah. In the but, mystic. But I mean, the first, when the TV gets smashed and some yeah, years that, someone screams, it that's is. her death. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, no, I, I just felt that there's probably, like you said, all the David Bowie stuff I think should have gone back in. Upon reading, uh, reading it a lot about this and going in, and going and doing my usual level of research about this and discovering that, that uh, Ingalls and Lynch had actually planned three films. They had planned a trilogy. And this was just going to be kind of the lead in for it. And the next, the next film was going to have Bowie at the, at the hotel in Argentina finding, finding a portal, you know, going, finding out that Judy, the character Judy that he talks about is uh, Josie's sister. Josie. Weird. And, and, and then uh, he finds a portal to the black lodge in Argentina, which then leads him to discover a bunch of other ways into the black lodge that are all over the world. And it becomes this sort of massive. Well, a lot of that's in season thing. three. A lot of that is, is it. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's that okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Then, I'm, then I'm glad that he went back and he mined all that stuff yeah. to, to put in, into season three, then I'll have to just enjoy it when I see it there. Yeah, Frost, Frost put it in. Well, did no, Ingles help? Ingles, with Ingles was not involved with no. season three. No, it's just Frost, right? But uh, obviously, Lynch had yeah, that anyway, stuff yeah. around. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed this immensely. Uh, reviewing this again, uh, just in and of itself, just all together by itself. Uh, it, it, in reference to the, the show, I, I, I absolutely adored it. I, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have probably enjoyed reviewing a movie more, much more than I did this other than the Muppet movie last week. And that was for entirely different reasons, but, uh, Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is far and away one of my favorite Lynch films easily. I just, it is the least accessible of his films. And that's why. No, it didn't. <laughs> well, yeah. My Inland Empire. No, Inland Empire. Oh. Well, going in, going in, you know, you feel like, oh, I didn't watch the TV series. Going into Inland Empire, you're like, okay, I got a shot with this. And then 40 minutes into that, you're like, fuck this movie. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's just. Again, like Raymond said, the way he crafts dreamlike sequences, it's just, I, I don't know anyone who's done it better than him that I've seen on screen or, or not, or maybe consistently done it better over time. With each successive film that has a dream sequence, it's, you know, it feels, it feels different each time. I do so. feel like in Fire Walk With Me, I mean, I, mean I, I do love it now, but I do feel like there are sequences that, that look cheap. I don't know if, how else to describe it. I mean, it looks like sometimes like yeah. the, if you like press on the set, it's going to fall over. <laughs> uh, not even like TV production level. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. And there's cert, certain performances by some of the sm you know smaller actors that I think are are bad. Ghastly. <laughs> Give me one. But you Raymond. know what's funny about that, man? And I and I get what you're saying, but the thing is. With a Lynch film, you never know if that's what he wants. Oh, I think or if is. that's or if that's just what you're getting. Yeah, no, I think based on a right. being a bad right. actor. Right. So you kind so matter. you can kind of <laughs> just see it and just no, <laughs> but you kind of see it and just go, oh, okay. Yeah. It's just a, it, no, I didn't. <laughs> that's, that's not how I reacted at all. Is getting into <laughs> his style, a, a different style that he was doing in the '90s and beyond where there's a lot of scenes that are awkward, you know? And I think he intentionally makes them awkward. But in this one, they're so awkward that they just kind of don't work. I think I think Cheryl Lee is fantastic in it. I think she oh, is absolutely brilliant. Oh, my God, yeah. She should have been nominated for an Oscar for it. Easily. And Easily. Uh, I think wow. Ray, okay. Ray Wise is Easily. absolutely great in it, you know? Can't stand him. I've never, I've never liked him since RoboCop. <laughs> I hated that guy I since RoboCop. Really there's a great, <laughs> there's a great, uh, Raymond, real quick. There's a great shot in Twin Peaks that kind of goes along with what Steve was saying, how he changes his emotion. From the TV show, there's a moment where he's crying 
about Laura and then instantly something happens and he turns and looks and he's yep. out of the crying and now as Bob and it's a classic moment from mm -hmm. the TV yeah. show that I remember more than anything. So I, I think he's really good. I don't know about RoboCop, but yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about RoboCop. I'm, I'm mostly making a joke, but he was one of uh, Bonniger's uh, people right. at That's RoboCop. Right. Yeah. He was right. a guy in a nightclub that got dragged out by his hair. Yeah. In RoboCop. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So I look forward to the day when, uh, when, uh, when one of Lynch's films is one of, our, one of our main films, so we can really kind of dig into Lynch and his oeuvre. But, well, uh, you can have me back and I'll pick one. <laughs> oh, there you go. That'll do it. Absolutely. In that case, Latham. Oh, yay. We're going down the tube. And again, the internet is not something that you just dump something on. It's not a big truck. It's, it's a series of tubes. All right. So now we're moving on to Twin Peaks. All right. Can't wait for this. Yeah. Well, I can because I have to wait yeah. for it to load, but you know what I <laughs> you mean. Can wait. You know what I should probably do All is right, drop so, another. Great tagline. Great. All right. Do you want to no, do it I, again I, no, without it me interrupting? I'll just fucking put it where I want it. I already said it. I already said okay. it once. USA. Tagline's great. Lettering is right with the show. Um, you have this. I mean, you have. The most iconic object in the show, the iconic actress and character, and you're in the Black Lodge. I mean, yeah, everything. If you're a fan, this yeah, is a perfect it, it set. This gives you everything you could expect. You know, correct. Um, so next is the UK poster. I don't like this one at all. Uh, I think it's the Bob is just I mean, Kyle McLaughlin being in the forefront is a lie. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, and the yeah. thing is, is he wasn't in it much because initially he said he didn't want to be in it at all. And, and then and, he realized, yeah, oh, shit, I'm Kyle McLaughlin. I haven't made a movie or TV show in years. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Lynch said, listen, I really, really need you to be in this. He's like, I'll, I'll reduce your, your role. You're only going to be in certain a few spots. You only have to shoot for a couple of days. And he, he went ahead and agreed. Yeah, why wouldn't you want to be in it? That's just, he just I mean, you come know, on, dude. The actors are a funny, funny bunch, man. Fuck them. I think, you know what? I think there's a lot, I think there's a lot less today worry about being pigeonholed into a role because I think back then you had a lot less crossover with TV and film. So you got, you had a guy who was yeah. a TV actor. If he got lucky enough to play a role in a movie and then he got lucky enough to get another role in a movie and it's the same fucking kind of role, he'd be like, Okay, I'll do it twice. And then the third time comes up. It's like, hey, we want you to play this guy again. If that, you know, he's so worried about becoming that guy for the rest of his career. If yeah. he's not one of those guys who's, you know, hey, I'm just happy to be working. You know, he starts to worry about yeah, that. He, he, but now I. Th he was just coming off the doors. Yeah, and, I think yeah. that I, I think there's a lot yeah. more that has to do with merit and ability now. And the, and the crossing over between TV and film is not a, as big a chasm as yeah. it, a lot of movie stars trying to get into TV now because it's a yeah. it's an up jumped medium, you know it's it's so exactly come a long way from where it was. It's a premiere media. It's a premiere format, and they're pay fucking paying. Um, he did need two years to prepare for Showgirls ugh. too. Uh, so next is the French poster. Meh. This one has to be good. Oh, it's just stock yeah. footage. They just did a bunch of cutouts. Yeah. Yeah, essentially, that's that's pretty much what all the all the marketing pr pr platforms were or programs were around the world. Like the next one, Italy. Although this one was more like it's uh, from cat people. Yeah. <laughs> if those were if those were if those were cat paws instead of hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Malcolm uh, McDowell is slightly in the background. Like, oh, yeah, there, yeah, there you are. Yeah, the French poster sucks. Okay. Uh, Italy a. It's got nipples. It won't go in, man. <coughs> One yeah. Italy, a. Eh? Come on, man. Load up. You know what the problem is, Lay? Is uh, the poster images are too big. That's why it's taking your computer a long time to load them. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot. I'll shoot for uh, making the images a little smaller on some of these. Nah, I, if that, okay. Um, I don't like this French A one. It's 
betrays what yeah I don't know. but you mean italy a italy a uh b is a little better i'm sorry movie yeah. b, did b is uh b makes it look more like a horror film which raymond says it's a horror film so you know i, I don't understand the slasher thing with the screaming thing once latham decides to come back yeah I'm trying to see if I can reload now. Nah, I mean, we're halfway through these now. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's I'm not not thinking. Um okay, so yeah. Italy, Sorry, Italy B is it looks like a, sl- a slasher movie poster. Yeah, I mean it's a little better than the other. Oh, it's Italy definitely one, better than the like other really one, but like it's just it's still, you know, it's just, it doesn't I feel like it doesn't convey the film. Yeah. Uh next is Japanese A style. Yeah, it's just an amalgamation of shots. It's garbage. Yeah, it's just, you know. Uh, and Japan beep, B style. Like this. It's a weird yeah, stock I mean, kind of, it's a weird like photo that would be on the agent's wall or, you know, like the actor's wall or something. You know, it's like, <laughs> hey, this is that yeah, time we acted with David Bowie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It feels like it's a weird. You know, it's a weird if I lived in Japan, it's a it would make stock, me stock uh, photo for them to use because it's not from the movie. Uh, next, right. we have the Poland. I mean, That's that one show. looks almost like. Actually, yeah, it looks like the season three of the TV show. I mean, it's taking images oh, it's, from yeah, it's, season it's one. The graduation That's photo, how they right. start season three. So was it canceled? Yeah, season how come three. It, how come it only stops at season three? They did. It was a one off. They just wanted to go on. I mean, did nah. they, they just they want they he wanted to do more Twin Peaks. He did eighteen episodes. That it, and, that it does it end this? Yeah, does it end the story? Is it a uh, no? <laughs> no, it <does> <laughs> no, it does not. It would end very annoyingly to you, Hassan. <laughs> Which means there's probably going to be more later. I doubt it. He's almost dead. Who? David Lynch? Well, I mean, he's old. I that, that was the wrong. Time. He's <laughs> old. Oh, a lot of work he's only mostly people. dead. He's <laughs> so negative. Right, anyway. So next, 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 we have the Disney version by Colin Newman. The Disney uh, version. I don't love it, but I like Why the would you do a Disney like, version. I don't Fire know. walk with me. I love how he did the oil pit in the forest. That's really yeah. Cool. No one else references that. Yeah, that's really neat. Uh. Uh, this next image, oh, this wow. next image by Dan Quintana, That's I nice. really like this. This was I love Cheryl and this Finn. was done for a, a Twin Peaks art show. Is that Cheryl I and Finn, or is I, that that's Cheryl and Finn? Yeah, that's Cheryl and Finn for sure. I I am don't the arm. <laughs> I, he he tried here. I don't. Ah. I I like that. I love yeah, this image. Bad. Okay, so who is the arm, Latham? It's a lot what, of who, what, what's the significance of the the Black Lodge. I am the Black Lodge. I think it's the place where the uh, where the evil incarnate lives, where the things that cause humans where the to, doppelgangers come from. Yeah, where they rape and where they rape Nop- and kill. Doppelganger. And the White Lodge is is their is their uh, uh, antithesis that tries to destroy them. Sometimes my arms bend back. Yeah, this is. Yeah, that guy with the mask, the the long nose mask that's in this next one. I'm sorry, are we on Gareth, Gareth Gibson? Gibson? Yeah, I mean that that's one of the creepiest dudes in the film. Uh, this is pretty. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like the the torn pages of the diary thrown in there. I like the yeah. It's an aspect that not a lot of people deal, uh, uh, you know, brought into their pieces. Have you guys read her diary? No. No great read like really really good like it's better than you think okay it's really mysterious and makes it it adds to the show because it did the did lynch and frost do it no uh his daughter did jennifer lynch oh really wow cool that's yeah. cool it's great i got two two copies if you guys want uh i gladly send one out if you well, want i'll definitely want to read it at some point okay so <laughs> next is uh the right <laughs> moving along <laughs> right oh uh, this is like the tv movie uh so yes this is for this was for an icelandic screening <laughs> uh and the and the uh 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 hugh Dagson. 
I, I think it's clever. I think a it's little funny. misleading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to sit down in that movie with 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 this imagery in your head, thinking that's the kind of adventure you're in for. Fucking all yeah. Oh my god, what happened? My eyes. What my the eyes. Hell? Uh, so next Trippy. is Jeff Van- Jeff Vandenberg. Oh, uh, okay. Lathan, yeah. Lathan's behind because he keeps checking his phone. I'm waiting for it to load, and it just doesn't load. It just won't load. I mean, it's... Uh, okay, I see what he did. He put yep. the... He put the uh, lodge symbol. Yep. Uh, with, yeah, I... I don't know. I it's a decent idea, but I don't I don't like how it's non symmetrical in the middle there. That bothers me. Okay. Uh next is Julia A doing uh kind of a Mooka styled uh it's illustration. Okay. I mean it's in that style it's good, right? Uh next oh, is nice. a image by Mac Maxime Porchon. Yeah. I like this one a lot. Yeah, me too. I feel I feel as much as I feel like you could just take Fire Walk with me off of this though, and it would work just as well. Yeah, it works for the TV show. It works for everything. Yeah, I think the idea works. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I don't feel that this is. I don't feel it's differentiated enough from you know that. Uh, next is Nate Gonzalez. Did it as a as a as a pulp novel. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like. I mean, again, I don't know about it as a poster, but it's perfect as a as the cover of the right. book. Tales, right, well, that's what he's going for. Black right. Lodge. Yeah. Um, so this next, it, I mean, that's brilliant. This, that's that part's brilliant. The next image is by far the most uh, disturbing. That Nick Charge. Yeah, because yeah. it's after she died. Well, yeah, and it's that guy. It's that guy from the. No, it's. It's Leland. Oh, it's oh, it's Leland with the yeah, with the makeup or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. He took elements that were you know some of my favorite elements from it. I, I like it. Yeah, me too. Um, cool. so the next one is a, is it's cool. It's by a guy named Peter Stoltz, and uh, what this guy does is he takes contemporary films and he reimagines posters as and as if they were made back as '40s noir films. I mean, that's just absolutely way out of the box uh, creative. So I'll give him credit for that. And it looks, it looks great. If you look, if so, you look him up online, Peter Stoltz, uh, you will find he's done a bunch of these and they're, they're just, if you know a lot about movies, they're a lot of fun. How is this not copyright infringement? What do you mean? You can just make a, any poster you want over anything. Well, as long as you don't make any money off of it, you can do whatever you want. Uh, no, uh, no, Latham. Oh, we La- can't make money off Latham, it. Latham, there was never a film. Alfred Hitchcock never made a film called Fire Walk With Me. I know, but someone could say, could define the intellectual property How? here and say. What, in, what intellectual I mean, property? That he's taking a movie that exists and applying it to, he's only changing the fact that it has a different director creatively, but in essence, mm-hmm. it's a poster for fire walk with how, me. I mean, I, how, I love it. I'm how not, many, how many films out there have the same name? Lots you of them. You can't copyright a name. Anyway. I'm not, you can't copyright a title. So you, right. He, he's got, the he's got title. no imagery from the film. Um, Correct. So this is the only the guy that can make money off these side posters without licensing them. Correct. Theoretically, that's correct. Oh, theoretically, because he's, he's essentially making a brand new, He's making a poster for a film that was never created. It's a workaround. Yeah, it's. I. I, I think it's a really great idea, and it's a really. Well, of course, and, it's, and, it's and the way he makes the posters and paints them is is just awesome. You know, now if you look in that poster in the lower right corner, he has the "Welcome to Twin Peaks" sign, so he might run into he ah, might run yeah, into yeah, trouble yeah. there. Sure, that's yeah. But, I, that's a good point. You know, other than that. Uh, so next is Fat Boy Art. I don't get the Roman numerals here. Me neither. I, I was going to ask you if that had some meaning for something, but I, I, I yeah, I don't uh-huh. understand what the point of that is. Because I figured if anyone would know, you would. I, I unless it's the, how many days? No, it's seven days of Laura Palmer. Last seven well, days. Yeah, maybe. 
Maybe it is. But the, the Roman numeral is a weird. If that's work, it, if it's if that's the reason, that's a weird reason. I think I think he did it because of the way those Roman numerals are shaped. That's the only thing I can think yeah, of. I suppose. Here. Yeah, but it wouldn't yeah. work just as fine without them. I agree. Yeah, that's. I think it worked better yeah, without yeah, them. Yeah. But yeah. But it's not terrible. So I mean, so next weird. is the first of another diptych that's by Robert bad. Samlin. Uh, yeah, that's pretty. Those are powerful. The, I like the, it. The two of them. Yeah, look at the next. I like one. the first one better though. Okay. I'm looking at the second one, it loads. Because that guy never looks. That guy neither looks like Bob nor Leland. So. I said that's because it's Bowie. Why? <laughs> look at his yeah, teeth. Yeah, but why? <laughs> What does that have to what do? do why? What does Bowie have to do with Laura Palmer? He's in the movie. He's in the movie. Okay. Do you remember he's when he comes in out of uh, he comes in on the security camera? Who knows? I'm saying it doesn't oh, okay. have anything to do with. Oh, you're he's saying not he a horror element. element of the film, other than he's he's a haunting element, but he's not a horrific. That that's true. The context is completely wrong. Yeah, you're right. That's true. Either way, I like both. I like, I like both the of them. first first yeah. one better. Uh, the next one you'll like a lot, Lay, is Sean Longmore. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's just the, the guy's nose coming out over the top. Yeah, I mean, I, I like this one a lot. Now, see on the ring there, is that really the symbol on the ring? It's got that yeah. one little part. That yeah, it's got it's symmetrical. It's got, I don't remember. It's got the that. little leg on it. Yeah. It's it's I not mean, a symmet- it's not it. a symmetrical image. Maybe I wanted it to be, so that's <laughs> fine. Or assumed it was. And I, I like that really he has know. the letters. Oh yeah, from the fingernails. Yep. Yeah, that's really cool. Wish I understood a tenth of that movie. Uh, so next is Sister Hyde. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Uh yeah, I mean it's, uh, I yeah it's it's got the proper elements. I don't mind. It's a neat little design. Uh, it looks kind of like a book cover. Uh, the unknown one. Yeah. Hey, jump ahead. It, it's, it's supposed to be in three D. I don't know. Uh, I got more out of it that it was just kind of in and out of the Black Lodge, but. Oh, probably. I don't know. I'd love to see this with 3D glasses. Probably be pretty fucked up. Uh, no, it wouldn't because it's not actually yeah, set up that not way. Not red and blue. It's just it's just two colors. Hold on, I'm gonna got some right here. Okay, but it's not gonna do anything for you. Oh my god, it's, it's right. that time of night, huh? Uh, <laughs> How could it be? Well, we're like two, uh, you know what? You're we're right. Like two and a half hours that before that time of night. It is that time of night for Latham. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It is. Next, I reached slap happy world. Next is uh, unknown oh one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean it's ah. What's the shadow? I don't. You know what? Yeah, I'm... I don't know. Yeah, it's meh. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't All have. Right. In, I shouldn't have included. This is boring. Uh, well, no, that's not boring. Uh, next just, is by. Anytime I get a chance to say I don't <laughs> like. Next it. is. Uh... <laughs> Next is the Wonder Bros. And that, and that byline just a little on the nose right there. In the town of Twin Peaks, no one is innocent. All right, so everybody's a dick. Okay, so I can stop watching. Done. Done. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> done and done. Yeah, we just, we just watched a, a horror film called Seven Deadly Sins the other night, and it's like they spend 25 minutes of the film setting or half, 25 minutes or 30 minutes of the film setting up these fucking characters. And by the time that they start getting fucking knocked off. You hate <laughs> all of them for one reason or another that you're just like, yeah, I'll, I'll, you, when are you going to fucking start yeah, killing rooting, these people? They all rooting for the killers. <laughs> there's, there's nobody, even like the quote unquote heroine of the film is a fucking cunt and you want her to die. So it's like, why make everyone hate all of the characters in your story? It's like, there's nobody to root for all you all at that point. All you want them to do is die. The, the, Which again is part. Uh, die, oh, the you, short you answer die. is that oh, they don't know how to write, because that shouldn't. No, you should be able to make anybody ah. sympathetic. I mean, they made Hannibal Lecter uh, fucking I don't, sympathetic at I one don't. point. 
Uh, I agree. I agree 100%. Great point, Hassan. Um, Great point. Well, you know why? Because he, you know, listen, he may have been insane, but, you know, like, like, like he's, you know, he had his reasons for, you know, grounded for everything he did. So he had a code, which, which allows you to like, "Mm, you know what, if I don't fuck with this guy, I'm probably going to get out of this conversation a lot. Uh, I thought Raymond was pretty good. What do you think? I enjoyed it. Uh, he was, and he, he he took our he took our uh, deep criticism in stride. So I yeah, uh, and he I fought appre- back. I, pre- no, it was good, I yeah. appreciated he that. Fu- yeah, he no, fought no, back he was, respectfully. You know, he, he 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 took everything in the in the tone that it was meant, and uh, I, I I I definitely thought he was uh, definitely a good guest. Cool, good. Did you? Yes. I mean, we got we got to get Joe on here. He will. Oh be. God. One of our I can't best. even imagine what movies he'd pick. I hope he picks one that Hassan doesn't like and just watch them two go at it. <laughs> we'll just sit back with me. popcorn. I'll have him pick. He'll probably pick one I don't like. And yeah. I'll just fucking then I get him. to sit back with the popcorn. I like that idea better. Yes. Did you know that Darth Vader was He's, in Clockwork uh, Orange? Yeah. Okay, good. Dave yeah. Oh, oh. Great movie. Interesting. I love that movie. Is Close Encounters, is Close Encounters in your top ten, yes. Hassan? Yeah, me Is too. it really? Yeah. Wow. That oh, fucking yeah, tin pushing scene creeps me out every time. It's successfully <laughs> which one? The tin pushing scene. The air, the traffic, air traffic, traffic control scene. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's really brilliant. It's just so it's well great. done. People are talking over each other, but you can hear everything everybody says. He's the the guy is like 26, 30 years old, and he's got enough bravery to make a scene, an action scene where nothing you see nothing, where nothing yeah. is happening. That is just that is a that is prescient knowledge. Like you don't learn to do things like that. That's something you instinctively know is going to be effective. You know, just just like and then at the end of it, that, it's that's an, it's it's something he saw in his head, and he and he was able to visualize it and and actually make it come out the way he he envisioned it. I I one hundred percent agree with you. But think about the medium. That medium, it it it, it almost uh it almost insists that you over. Uh, enunciate everything you know you overdo right. everything so the fact that he took a minimalist approach with something with a major sequence in his in his story it's just and also it's just a wonderfully put together film you know they go to yeah, this they, they go to they go to the to india and these guys are all singing because they heard that it's just all this stuff just eerily wonderfully put together the only thing i the only scene i didn't like or don't like as much as the rest of the world is the scene where what's his name gets taken away because it's just so oh, on the right. nose. It's so like, okay, aliens are coming. Oh, Carrie Guffey. Yeah. Aliens are coming. The toys are all coming to life and they snatch Carrie. the kid. Carrie. Now the scene where he, the kid, I mean, the shot down the fireplace flew is just, man, that's, yeah. that's heart pounding. And the scene where he opens the door is probably the most visually stunning thing I've ever seen on film. So I, I'm not saying I don't like I the scene. Agree. I'm just saying, it's it's a completely different yeah. mood than the rest of the film, you know. The, the scene where they're they're all on the fucking cliff and the, the UFO goes whizzing by and it's being chased by three cop cars. Just this, <laughs> you know, it's just one. And then one of the guys goes right off a cliff because he's too busy watching the. Yeah, right. yeah so right. so great, man! It's so awesome. Yeah, we, it it came around to our uh, our revival theater a couple years ago, so we went and saw it on the big screen. It was fun to you see. Gotta again. do it. I had I did that. Um, I did it a couple of years ago. I went down to Time, not Times Square, Union Square, uh, the Union Square Theater, and I just, I'm like, I am so in, and I filed in, yeah. and it it was it was everything I wanted it to be, man. It was a wonderful. Yeah. That's the only time I saw it on the big screen when they just re released it. Yeah, because well, yeah, I was too young to go see it in the theater. You know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see it in the theater at all. I have a I have a very happy memory. That seventy eight. That was a year after Star Wars. Yes, it was. Seven. Same as Star Wars. Yep. It was okay. I I have a. If I'm not mistaken, no, no, I don't. Seventy. I thought it was seventy-eight. I don't, I don't doubt you. No, it's seventy-seven. The scene, one of my favorite memories, of my mother. Seventy-seven. It says seventy-seven. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Um, the scene where Dece- uh, December fourteenth, seventy-seven. That's why I thought it was seventy-eight because it was yeah, almost it was seventy. Cusp, it's on the cusp of. <laughs> A scene where Richard Dreyfus <laughs> breaks down, or he is, you know, he, he stops to read his map. Yeah, yeah. The and truck. It, you know, and the thing comes up behind him and floats away, and then picks him up and all that stuff. After after that, the car starts again. He freaks out. He's half sunburned. He freaks out. He drives mm-hmm. away. 
my mom, I'm sitting on the sofa in my grandfather's house, and we're mom, she had to whisper it to me because my grandfather's there. And she goes, and she leans over and she goes, that's what you call hauling ass. <laughs> it just, just burned in my memory. Like, she's like, that's oh, what you, yeah, you'll yeah, never forget that's that. what you call hauling ass. Fantastic. That two things I remember from my mom, that and History of the World Park 1, where he's, where he's doing his uh, Torquemada shtick, and then he says, let's face it, you can't talk about it. The minute he says, let's face it, my mom went, oh, like she, she knew the joke was coming. <laughs> she just, she just <laughs> wilted inside to like, no, don't do this. <laughs> uh, that's great yeah. memories. Yeah. Oh my God. So I just realized that the, the guy who was sitting on the hill during that chase sequence with the, with the alien ships and he's got the sign yeah, yeah. that says, stop, we're friendly. Yeah, he's that's, somebody. That's, yes. that's George LeBay from Christine. Shitters. Really? That's the old man. That's the old man that sells him the car. <laughs> oh my God. That's a great piece of trivia. Spielberg's older work, Shitters. man. It's, there, it's just so wondrous. I mean, I like I like it all is. of his he, movies. I, there's not really a Spielberg movie I don't like, but he got really slick in space. the later years. You know, I don't think he ever oh, yeah. lost his eye. I don't think he ever lost his creative flair. But there is a slickness in his later movies that his earlier movies had a a kind of randomness to them that was really, you know, looking at it now contemporarily looking back at it, it's just really exciting. There's a lot of excitement to his movies. And then there's a lot of just on the nose shit that he just didn't give a fuck about. Like uh, like Raiders of the Lost Ark, the hero on the white horse. You know, like there's some things he just like, fuck you, you know, I'm just doing this, you know? Then you got all of a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, you know, Indiana Jones finds a white stallion in the middle of Egypt, you know, to, to chase a to chase a bunch of Nazis. You don't even question it. You know, you're like, all right, that works. God, that works. Yeah, it's, Definitely. it's working so well at that point. Yeah, it doesn't matter. What absolutely. Else. I think his, his worst movie or his, my least favorite movie by him is it's probably 1941. That's a tough one. It is a tough one. Uh, it's not horrible. It's not horrible. It's just. When I was a kid, it used to be on HBO like every other night. And I used to love it because it, yep. it had fighter planes in it. And, you know, it had John Belushi oh, from, yes, from no. Saturday Night Live. I didn't understand a word that was being said in the film. But, uh, and, and Dan Aykroyd, a bunch of other people. Years later, I got a copy of it. And I sat down and watched it. And none of it was funny to me. Like, like every joke failed to land, you know. So, I agree. Not as bad. I still like it. And I think John Williams' score of that film is ridiculous. If you've, if you've never heard it separately, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. But, um, yeah, it's not. I just read when, the other day when, we are, when our power was out for a day and, or for a day and change, I, uh, I read two books. I, uh, I, I finished Carrie Elwes' Making of uh, Princess Bride, As You Wish book. Okay. And I, and I also read a book that detailed the making of caddyshack written by a well-known media writer so he spends a good portion of that talking about the guys who came up with the idea and wrote caddyshack and then you know obviously it was harold ramus's directing debut but oh, all right yeah it's it's a it's an actual wonder that 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 film ended up where it is let's put it that way caddyshack uh, yeah it's a good way yeah to yeah yeah because basically when he shot it he shot he calls it a six million dollar film school because wow. his budget was six million dollars, and he'd never made a movie before. And basically, he just shot a bunch of stuff. And when they went to edit it together, nothing worked. And they they basically brought in a professional editor who said, "Yeah, I can." Well, they went they went to a they went to a real editor, and the guy goes, "He kind of looked at what they had, and he goes, "Yeah, I can fix this. I need two hundred fifty thousand dollars." Oh. And the guy, and they go, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> so the guy ended up calling a buddy of his who had done editing before. And he sat down. He was actually starting a gig in a few weeks. So he started editing and he, he spent about two weeks cutting the movie together. 
Um, and then he had to go, so he couldn't finish it, but they ended up finding a guy finally to come in and finish editing properly. Uh, and that's how they ended up with what they have. But uh, wow. because when Ramus, Ramus and the other producer were editing it, it was just it was a fucking disaster. Interesting. Yeah, that's I, what I um, love. Uh, but what was sorry, sorry. I think yeah, it, what, what was most interesting about it was so the team who put together, who wrote and 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 ended up putting together uh, Animal House, which when Animal House came out and was such a fucking fantastic gigantic hit, um, it made all these guys instantly you know instant famous, you know, like instantly, you know, hot guys in Hollywood. Yeah. So the one guy ended up going off with Ramus to do Caddyshack. Well, the other guys all kind of went off in other directions, but the heat that was generated by, you know, coming out of the product, the fact that it was produced by national lampoon. And one of the guys that national lampoon had hired early on as a writer was John Hughes. So, there is a script out there of which they have a copy up for sale on a website for $800. Obviously I'm not shelling out for this, but I would love to fucking get my hands on this, but the name of the script and it's written by John Hughes and somebody else is national lampoons jaws three human zero. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> and it was supposed to be done as a total spoof oh my of God. the Jaws films. I heard about that. It, it was brilliant fourth wall. But brilliant. they knew, well, and they knew, but the studio basically read the script and they knew that there was no way that if they were, if for, for any reason at all, it was successful. They can never, they would never be, they would never be able to continue the series. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they eventually chose to go back and do a serious three and 3d film i think but originally xanax that script exists it's somewhere xanax well, said I, I know where a copy is for sale i mean you can but it's like people acknowledge that it does it's not oh like yes it yeah it's not like a secret that's weird yeah. that's really that's good pop culture i would though. love to i would love to get my hands on that just to read it an early john hughes script spoofing the jaws yeah. spoofing jaws films yeah is Blade Runner in your top ten, Hassan? No. Oh, the all out sequel is. Mm-hmm. Is it really? I really like the sequel. All out. I tell you, every time every time I watch Twenty Forty Nine, I I like it more, and I've seen it about eight or ten it's, times. It's really, it's, it's really an good. amazing film. It's it just I, I tell and I tell you, I watched it the first time and I was nonplussed. Really? I was like, I was yeah, like, I was like, eh, it's beautiful. And now, and after I've seen it five or six times, I was like, "Fuck me, that's fucking good." Not better than the original. I but knew I loved it's a it. Different animal. It's you know what it is. I will I will challenge you They're on in that. They're the same zoo, but it's a different animal. I, it is better because it in in and of itself is a comprehensive story, where the first one is a spectacle, with with very little story to it. Wrong, and we will talk about that on that podcast. <laughs> Not wrong, and we will talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> Don't you tell me. Don't you tell me, motherfucker. I'll come to Chicago and cut your ass. Um, I'm going I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna to use that piece of video as a gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the... You just doing what you were doing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I will figure out a way to make that a gift. I put that on the podcast page. <laughs> this is what happens when someone doesn't agree with someone else. He has a you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna find you. And then I'll just and I'll just get a, a screenshot of like Hassan when his uh, when his thing fails and it just has Hassan Godwin with no image. He just he just he, Hassan just leaves. Just and Lath- Latham gets on his back and then throws a tantrum. <laughs> For tonight's show, but I couldn't. I couldn't get my act together to do it. Tonight's show, I wanted my. I wanted the whole screen to just be Hal for the entire time we talk. It's the the little Hal bubble, <laughs> but it, yeah. Funny. But it yeah, was, you would have had to have delivered. You would have had to have been. You know, uh, hello, gentlemen. I didn't find the film that very that that good. <laughs> it gave me reasons to dislike the film. <laughs> it, I'm sorry, Raymond. <laughs> I have to disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> it puzzles me how you can actually like that film as much as you do, Raymond. I'm sorry, Latham, <laughs> but you're wrong. 
about Hell, open everything. The bathroom door, Hell. I have to go to the potty. <laughs> open the bathroom door, yeah. Hell. I'm, the potty. I'm monitoring your vitals. You do I'm not sorry, have to go Latham. to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Stop monitoring my bowels. No. <laughs> I enjoy it. I'm sorry. It's for your own good. <laughs> I should probably do the outro. You should. Because we didn't while do Latham's, it. While, while, Latham, while Latham's not here. While he's gone potty. <laughs> so I would like to say special thanks to our guest, Raymond Benson. Thanks to Purple Planet Music. Get your own awesome music at purple-planet.com. Please check out our website, cinementalpod.com, for all the poster images we discuss on our Down the Tube segments. And don't forget to download and subscribe to Cinemental wherever you enjoy your podcasts. Or you can always listen to new episodes at cinementalpod.com. Also, you can follow us on all major social media accounts at cinementalpod. For Asan Godwin, Lathan Conger III, and myself, we say thank you so much for listening. And as always, in the words of our friend and mentor, and a darn good driver, Truman Burbank. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.